Yeah, I think it does. Okay. Hello, this is Brian Perry with the Florida Aviation Network at Sun and Fun 2024 at the Innovation Showcase at the Future in Flight Expo here in lovely Lakeland, Florida. Today we're visiting with Dallas Brooks of Wing. He is the Aviation Outreach and Standards Lead, and he's going to tell us about how Wing is operating uh, today, not just tomorrow. Good afternoon, Dallas. How are you doing today? Well, absolutely wonderful, Brian. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Now, um, I understand we talked a little bit. You've been here since Sunday. Uh, I'm going to kill some of your thunder, and I sort of alluded to it, er, about everybody asking when you started, and you've been going for uh, how many years now? We've been doing commercial deliveries to people's homes and businesses for over five years on three continents and actively delivering in the DFW area for the past two years. That is great. And no incidents and everybody's, are there people saying, hey, we want aerial delivery versus uh, picking up or something like that? Oh my gosh, that is the question that we get from almost everyone we talk to is when does this come to my neighborhood? Yeah. So yes, the demand's been amazing and the folks here, uh, such an incredible time here at Sun and Fun because the people who come are interested in the technology, they're interested in the good that it can do, and of course they're interested in aviation, which we're very passionate about. Now, are there any particular, since you're, you're limited to like three pounds right now on the delivery size? On the current aircraft, yes, but we have aircraft in development that can handle larger loads. Okay. So uh, what kind of, are you may not even have insight of what kind of things they're trying to deliver by air. I'm guessing somebody said, I need this single item quickly, potentially uh, prescriptions or something like that. Any ideas on how it's a breakdown of the products that are being delivered? It's such a variety. In the, in the DFW area, we're partnered with Walmart. And so there's a, an incredible variety of, of things that Walmart carries that are appropriate for weight and for delivery. Uh, the things that, that we won't carry are things that are considered hazardous materials by the FAA, right? So there's so mercury thermometers, for example, uh, and there's certain pharmaceuticals that obviously we can't carry. But uh, we, we do have approval to carry a very broad range of products and, and food. So. Okay, great. Now, what I was getting back to it before is, is there a way for the customer to choose aerial delivery versus any other type of delivery? Uh, absolutely. Okay. In the app, when they're ordering, um, they, they can... We're actually transitioning from using the Wing app to order something to you, to integration into Walmart's own app. And so literally in the Walmart app, you, you can choose, I'd like this drone delivered, and it automatically adds it to their appropriate place. And Walmart or whatever, they decide the, the, the cost of that because uh, you're providing the service to the store, potentially fixed pricing or some sort. I'll let you describe, describe that. Well, that's exactly what we do. We, we, we are partnered with Walmart. Um, they set whatever pricing or rates are appropriate. Uh, we don't even, you know, really see that. So it, they just, uh, they pay us for the service that we provide, and the rest of it is fairly transparent. Okay, great. Now, behind us, we have C, we have some of the, uh, do you have an actual name for the particular model that you, of uh, this aircraft? We do. We do. Okay. This is called the Hummingbird series, uh, uh, more formally the hum Hummingbird 7000 series, and we have several variations of that. We have the WA, the WB. Um, what you see behind me is mostly the WB. It's uh, it's our most recent version of the aircraft. It has 16 motors. Um, 14 of those do vertical flight, and I'm sorry. 12 of those do vertical flight, and four of those do do forward flight. Right. The airplane transitions from a VTOL vertical takeoff and landing aircraft into a traditional fixed wing forward moving aircraft uh, in the cruise portion of flight. Does it get to the point where, okay, we've got enough forward speed that we reduce the power on the lifting uh, motors? Absolutely. Conserve? Just turns them off completely, actually. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, probably, okay, we can shut down two. Okay, we're going fast enough, we'll shut down another two or something like that. Uh, the, the sequence is, is totally up to the airplane, but yeah, it, it, once, it, once the, uh, the airplane reaches its cruise altitude, the forward motors energize, bring it forward at the appropriate airspeed, the, other, the, the vertical motors disengage. Okay, great, great. That's, that sounds interesting, and, and, and the packages are not a free fall delivery. They're actually controlled, so they make sure they get into the right location. Oh, very, very much so. Yeah, the, when you place an order on the app, the, the order is essentially bifurcated. So um, a, the order contents go to the vendor, such as Walmart, and then the routing 
uh, or destination go to Wing System, right? So the Walmart picker, the same folks that, that would uh, pick out your order that you would pick up in your car at Walmart, um, they, they go get the items, they place it in Wing's special container. Um, once that's loaded, they weigh it to make sure it's appropriate to weigh, and then they bring it outside to the delivery area to be loaded on the drone. Meanwhile, that same order goes into the Wing system, and we say we're going from this Walmart to this delivery address. Since you've got our app on your phone, you've already told us where you want it delivered in your home. It could be your driveway, it could be your backyard, wherever, just an area that's, that's clear. Um, and so we, we plan that route. We make sure that our route is deconflicted from other wing drones, and we're actually working a project right now in the DFW area that all of the drone delivery companies work together to deconflict operations in an automated way. Um, so right now that's not an issue because where wing operates, we're the sole drone delivery operator. So all of this is done automatically, right? Humans aren't even involved in the process. Um, and then when, when the uh, order comes out, and Walmart reports it is ready for pickup. Uh, an airplane gets an assignment, it gets its route of flight, it powers up, lifts to about seven feet off the ground, hovers for a moment and does a self-check. Make sure all the motors are reporting good, all the health systems are reporting good. Says, okay, I am good to go on a mission. I'm appropriately charged and ready to go. At that point, it climbs to about 21 feet and our, our, our what we call our pill, which is the package delivery hook, comes down. We attach the package to it. It is winched up into the aircraft, locked into place very securely. And then the airplane climbs to cruise altitude, transitions to fixed wing mode, and heads straight to the delivery location. We do vary our routing a little bit to make sure that our, our routes don't always go over the same places, even though that once it reaches cruise altitude, you can't hear it from the ground. Uh, once it gets to its destination, it again vertically descends over the delivery point. Um, it, it checks the area to make sure that there's not movement, for example, or an unforeseen obstacle. And then it gently lowers the, air, the package to the ground, disengages, winches the hook back up, and heads home. Once it gets home, it finds its, its own charging pad, settles down on that pad, there are contacts in the bottom of the plane, and the airplane charges itself and reports ready for the next mission. Wow. And all of that's potentially just based on the distance of, okay, five minutes to pick it, two minutes to load it, 10 minutes to drive out, three minutes to bring it down and then return home. Okay, uh, so I'm, I'm sort of guessing that it's picking up everything, you know, as you go, it's trying to do a direct line from store to destination. Well, once again, we vary the routing. So we pick, we pick efficient routes, but we do vary them a little bit. And also make alterations, if, if needed, to deconflict from other aircraft. Okay. So you're, you've got your own traffic management system, Absolutely. basically automatic. Very, very okay. complex Great. and okay. reliable. Yes. Okay, so you, you're, you're checking on the destination that nobody's moving around. So you really don't want people there trying to catch it. Oh, goodness, no. Yeah, your job as a customer is just to wait until you get the notification on your app, walk out and get your package. It's like, hey, I don't want anybody seeing me. <laughs> I mean, people do watch yeah. because yeah. it's fun to watch, right? Yeah. Okay. But, but uh, clearly we, we don't want mm -hmm. customers um, oh. interfering with the process of delivery, right? Just, just remain clear, watch it, enjoy it, and then once the package is in your driveway, retrieve it and get what you need. Now, the package, we should have brought one over here, uh, is, is this a design that you guys came up with that's most aerodynamic? This or, is a design that is, it, uh, so many things went into this design. Obviously we were concerned with capacity, right, volume. Um, we also wanted it to be semi-aerodynamic, right? We wanted it to be very stable, and we wanted to make sure that, that once it landed, um, the coupled design of the package and the hook that holds it in place uh, were harmonious, and so the hook would always disengage, and we could winch and move away. It, it's amazing how many engineers were involved in the design of this package, but the result has been extraordinarily reliable and has been uh, proven over, you know, obviously a good six, seven years at this point, um, and continues to be used. We haven't have had to modify this package in quite some time. Now, do the, does the customer get like a, a credit for bringing back a package for reuse? <laughs> they are fully recyclable, but no, we don't ask for them to be returned. Well, that would be one way to do it. And it would it's be. like, yeah, as long as nothing's spilled, it's still usable. Okay, great. Um, we're going to take a break because you have a, me a meeting to go to, and then we'll discuss some more things when we get back, a little bit more view of the aircraft itself. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm looking forward to that discussion. As am I. This okay. is fun. Thanks, okay. Brian. Thank you, Dallas. Have take a great day. Okay. So, so we're looking. This is the Hummingbird 
Bravo. 7,000 WB. That's right. WB. Okay, great. And uh, I was just looking at it, and it, it's interesting. It looks like you've got counter-rotating props sort of symmetrically across this. How does that, you know, that how that was a plan or what? I, I, I'm just... <laughs> I, I, Everything about this airplane was definitely a plan. Um, ab absolutely. As you see, the vertical um, uh, hover motors are aligned on booms, right? Um, they're obviously symmetrically placed and, and can, can move up and down in a very stable way. Uh, we're, it, the design is such that we can lose multiple motors and still be stable. Uh, we've really never lost multiple motors right because our our our, our fail rate is uh is is extraordinarily good on these particular systems and and they're all built to our specs um there's also the four forward facing motors right that uh, that we use in cruise flight uh we cruise at roughly 55 knots um and and our cruise speed almost never varies the only the only time it varies is is out of acceler uh, out of acceleration to to get ready to descend and obviously once we've climbed into acceleration um, the the airplane is uh, essentially 11 pounds of styrofoam with some carbon fiber reinforcement at key, key places it is designed to absorb impact and to be um, substantially frangible so in, in the event this thing strikes anything, it's designed to take the punishment, absorb the energy, where the air, airplane is essentially sacrificing itself for safety. And that was part of the decision to use a lot of tiny motors instead of fewer, larger motors. Um, the batteries are designed to eject down and away. Um, so all of the, the components um, that might provide a surface of impact that, um, that is anything less than soft styrofoam, you'll see they're, they're at the rear of the airplane, right? So this nice little little nose and, and these booms will take take the impact in a forward uh, collision. And again, the components are designed to essentially break apart. And the- uh, There's a winch motor, yes there is. Okay, styrofoam, I'm wondering, it can't have cost a lot of money to manufacture. <laughs> well, we don't release what our manufacturing cost is. Um, everything about this airplane um, was designed to support scaled operations, right? Thousands of airplanes, right, in different locations. And so cost was a consideration, um, but it was probably the fifth consideration after safety and a bunch of other things. So, yeah. Yeah, doing it safe, but how do we make sure we can replace as necessary, grow as necessary, without that being a, a negative factor to everything. Absolutely. Okay. And it's, it's uh, for example, uh, the brains of the outfit are, are in this rear compartment, and it's, it's possible to, to very quickly remove that and slide it into an entirely new fuselage. Now, I want to be careful when I say pre-programmed. The, the, the routes are dynamically programmed for each mission. So they're not like, we don't have a, a database of, of selected routes, right? They're dynamically programmed for each mission to meet the needs of that mission, right? In an efficient way. You put down together, put together a plan, they start flying it. If something pops up, will they see it? So yeah, we do have detect and avoid technology on this aircraft. Um, that is one of the few times when we when we don't maintain our, our cruise speed, because uh, the first thing the airplane will do, uh, uh, the sequence is, is essentially stop, drop, and land. So the first thing it does is decelerates rapidly to a stop, and lets what other uh, conf potentially conflicting aircraft s simply harmlessly pass by, right? Or, or a bird. Or a bird, right? Uh, sorry, as I bumped the airplane. Um, <laughs> Uh, the, the second maneuver, it, uh, and, and actually, it's not, it's not really going to make an avoidance maneuver around a bird. It's, it's designed to look for airplanes. Um, but with that in, that in mind, once it stops, if the other airplane continues to head towards, it descends very rapidly. That's the drop step, right? It's almost 800 feet a minute. It goes very, very quickly. Um, so down to a, 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 an altitude low enough to be below any normal air traffic, right? Um, and then it just holds there and waits for the traffic to pass. And should... Should the traffic pass in either of those scenarios, airplane climbs, resumes its mission, right? Uh, if for some reason the other air, traffic, the other air traffic is intent upon coming after us, right, it, and it would have to descend towards us at an altitude extraordinarily low, which has never happened in history as far as our operations go. But if it were to do that, then our airplane would uh, basically execute a very slow descent to a safe landing. So does it not recognize birds or just not worried about birds because he could have a bird that's saying that's dinner <laughs> well, 
Well, we did have a bird saying that's dinner. Um, there's a great video on YouTube of a raven that attacked one of our aircraft when it was attempting to make a delivery. Uh, it took, took a little bit of uh, material out of the tail, if I recall, uh, but uh, the airplane, being so well designed, uh, survived and was able to return home. Okay, great. Um, was looking at some other things, we talked a little bit about the reel dropping down for connectors. You also talked about the automatic loader eventually coming. Um, I guess that's a good thing if you're going to only have like a four second window for a human operator to put that on there. I guess that's something you found out at LTR? Oh, we found that out through testing and through you know, 350 thousand plus commercial deliveries right so if, if there's a way that that we can minimize um steps particularly human intervention steps um and replace that with reliable and safe automation then we do that because that helps us scale uh, that much faster right i guess i'm always wondering okay is four seconds a good average you know somebody's tripping or something like that but yeah as long as it from understand it, it raises it back up. Okay, let's start over again, and gives the person a chance. Okay, I'm ready now. It's it's not been the four seconds has not been a challenge. I'll put it that way. Because by the time the aircraft has done its self check, we've got we've got that person standing by, ready to go. So uh, it's it's not been an issue. Okay, great. Um, and I also sound like the automatic loader. Uh, it's not like you've got a lot of potential products really close together. They're still s separated, so it's not like they're going to pick up the wrong one by accident. No, no, they, 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 the wrong one won't, won't be uh, picked up by accident as long as it's obviously placed in the right spot, right? So when, once it's placed in the right spot, the aircraft knows what spot to go to and executes the pickup procedure. So, yes. Great. Well, it sounds like eventually, if you live in an urban area with the right conditions, you can look forward to having a wing delivery from Walmart and maybe some other uh, distribution points, Amazon or whatever, in the future. Well, Amazon is working on their own solution, so, uh, but uh, we have partnerships with uh, food delivery services and with restaurants themselves as well as Walmart. Um, so, and if you're living in the Dallas area now, we're expanding rapidly. Uh, so expect this year we'll have coverage over a, a good portion of the, of the metropolitan area. And stay tuned for announcements about our next cities. Um, in the meantime, folks who are interested in having this service come to your area, you can go to wing.com. And literally there's a spot where you can enter your address and say, let me know when it's coming. And that way we'll, we, we can uh, reach out to you. And for those folks who do that, they tend to be the folks that we work with as early adopters um, as we're starting the service and they get the first deliveries. Great. Incentives. That's Absolutely. always good. <laughs> okay. Well, any last words? We'll go ahead and I know a lot of stuff going. The air show's getting ready to go, but I like to let, let my guests make. Okay. I meant to say something about this, but I forgot. Anything new? Uh, just that uh, it's been a tremendous experience working with the Sun and Fun staff here. The thing that I love the most about uh, coming to, to venues like this is we're talking directly uh, to the aviation public and the general public. And the question that we get the most is, um, gosh, when are you guys are going to get out of the test phase and, and when will this be a reality? And we get the most surprise when we tell them, oh, we're, we're doing it commercially right now and have been for a number of years. Um, so that's sort of eye widening and then the questions come really quickly and people leave pretty motivated. So uh, the most common question we get after that is, is when are you coming to my area? Well, Dallas, thank you very much for spending time with us. Uh, we'll let you enjoy the rest of Sun and Fun. And uh, thank you. I appreciate it, Brian. Okay, thank it's been you. Great. Okay. And again, this is Brian Perry with the Florida Aviation Network, live and in the clear from Sun and Fun Aerospace uh, Expo 2024 in the Innovation Showcase in the Future in Flight Plaza. Have a great day.